let's continue spring football discussion. Um, you know, one thing I want to hit on is recruiting because this is a very big part of what's going on right now. I would say the recruiting storylines that emerge in the next few weeks are as big as the football ones because this really? this month will develop the recruiting class and they've had some big kids already on campus. Noah McKell was here. We interviewed him on Recruit Spotlight this last week. Um, he's the top linebacker on the entire West Coast. The class top. of 2025. Correct. Yeah. I mean, there's some 26s and 27s, but we're really th- we're talking 25s. Malachi Goodman um, will be back again this week, top lineman from the state of New Jersey. So that's recruiting is different now because the window between March and June is when all the work gets done now. Isn't that something? Yeah. I mean, Noah McHale owes at practice today. We're talking on Tuesday. So he was he was there taking it in. Um, God, Sean, what you said is really, I just hope people understand that. Like people that, you, well, you know, older guys like me got used to recruiting a certain way. It's so much different now. This is the time. The part to be that about it. I'm most uncomfortable with is the, the home game weekends aren't as big of a factor for Nebraska. I mean, they right. can be for underclassmen, right? but usually a guy, when they can take official visits, the home game weekend's already out of the picture. I mean, that that is the best thing Nebraska can sell as a game day Saturday. So they've got to sell these recruits, and you hope to get them in Lincoln two or three times between March and June. You, yeah, the, I, going back to the home games, Sean, you say that, but man, we go to those home games, there's – there's a ton of recruits. There. Oh, for sure, younger guys, but probably. not as many of the big official weekends. Okay, like these these are day trips. <clears throat> oh, okay, where they come in. Um, but yeah, you you need to get those kids there young. Then you get them back in March and April, and then hopefully get them back in June. And the Nebra- Nebraska will have probably three big official visit weekends for football. One on the spring game weekend, and then you're looking at probably two in June. Okay. And and those will be where a lot of the work gets done with the official visitors. Okay. Yeah. So Tony White talked about that today. What what recruits see when they come watch his defense? And I thought he had a great answer. He said, what they see, this is a great answer, by the way. And it it should make people feel confident about a Nebraska defense that was ranked 11th at the end of last year nationally in total defense. He said, you'll see a bunch of kids who believe, that clearly believe in what they're doing, um, that are all in, understand it. And it's easy to believe in because you watch their defense and there wasn't a lot of bus. Um, they were sound. And like Robin was saying earlier, now that was, that was, that was after a period of, probably a little bit of scramble when they first started because of the first year staff set, they settled in really well. So yeah, I mean, this is, this is probably a top 15 defense. Well, Nash Hotmacher, we talked to him this week and 295 is what he weighed on Tuesday. Six four two ninety five, And you can see it in his neck. He you can, he looks thin mm-hmm. in the neck. He does mm-hmm. face is smaller, neck smaller. He says during wrestling season, that was some of the best condition he's been in his life. Mm-hmm. I think it clearly helped him. I mean, well, Tanner Farmer is a great example of a guy that helped. Tanner Farmer, from what years was that? Well, he was a Pelini guy. Okay. And he finished with Mike Riley. Okay. But he um, kind of lost his edge and he went back to wrestling and competed a limited amount in pra- practice. And then he was able to um, wrestle and join the football team. But yeah, look at Nash. I mean, yeah, look at this different look. And he'll get up to about 310. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, I'm not worried about Nash Hutmacher losing a lot of strength. He's the polar bear. No, he. I mean, he came in. I know previous strength coach Zach Duvall, I, I believe that staff said this, that as far as an incoming freshman, he was this, one of the strongest guys they ever worked with for a guy that's coming in out of high school. Boy, Nash, Nash is so critical to the defense. you got to be strong up the middle. That's where he's at. Ty Robinson, Nash Hutmacher, Cam Lenhart. Those type of, I mean, Jamari Butler. Oh my God, those guys are. I mean, they're good. They're good. And if they get better, that's what I'm talking about. Can like can Nash be an All Big Ten player? I think he's Van I think Poppel. He, yeah, I, Von Poppel's big in that equation. But when I talk about All Big Ten players, Nash is the type of guy that could be that. He was close last year. Yeah, yeah he's the not, entire the first ones that come to mind. Yeah, yeah, I agree. One of the things that stood out to me about Tony White's little interview was when he was t- asked about the cornerback position, and you know, I. I 
other than Tommy Hill, who else is in that? Yeah. And you name the usual suspects, Malcolm Hartzog, Ethan Nation, Mari Buford, Jeremiah Charles. He said Except there's a whole bunch of guys working there. But one of the things that he followed with, something really caught my attention. It goes back to recruiting, especially with the notion of recruiting to a position mm -hmm. on defense. He says, it's not so much about what position they play, but what can they do? So when it comes to where a guy is going to play, it's about finding the best position that tailors his skill set. So he might be recruited as a cornerback or a safety, but that doesn't have anything to do with what he's going to do in Nebraska's defense and where he's best suited in that system. So like not only just as it pertains to the depth chart this year, but I think looking ahead, when you see him take all these defensive backs, not mm -hmm. only are they talking about maybe like a, a, a jab and right moving up to linebacker or anything like that, but you could play corner safety, nickel, yep. like any, any of Ooh. those spots, the interchangeability if that's even a word it of is. this defense, it is a word is, is it continues to hammer home to me that like, I, you don't pigeonhole a guy like Malcolm Hartzog is not just a corner. Like he could play safety, you know, same thing with Marcus, Marquis Buford. Like mm -hmm. there's so many guys like that, that you can move to two or three different spots within that secondary. And I think that's going to be kind of the vision with these prospects that are visiting and, and recruits that come in just because they're listed on their profile as one position has no bearing on what their position is going to be at the It's ridiculous so. how many young defensive backs are on that scholarship chart. When you look at the freshman or retro freshman. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't even mention, he didn't mention Boodle who, you know, can play. Mm -hmm. He didn't mention Jeremiah Charles who kind of become, he Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Um, He's the Jer last, last Jeremiah time. Charles was featured heavily in the uh, chasing three along with Jalen Lloyd. Okay. And, and that was fascinating to see his development and, you got to give coach real credit on a guy like that. He'd have no offers. He was going. He wasn't even going to do football in college. Well, I'm not gonna, okay. And and rule watched him play basketball, and they offered him, and, and they've seen him blossom and develop behind the scenes. Now, well, transferred on the field. That's the thing. That's where the bowling shirt expert Steve Sipple over here is going to weigh in. Yeah, I was about to say, and I wasn't being an ass. I, I was just going to say, I'm not going to give Coach Rule a lot of credit until, until he we know. His, yeah, no, I, I tackle. Agree. You know, I mean. Um, he hasn't made one yet, so we'll see. Yeah, what like. Well, and we've fallen on these spring <laughs> landmines before. Oh, I have, yeah. A lot of them. A lot of them. Where you spend like the whole weekend writing a story on a guy that never ends up playing. Right. <laughs> Stip and I were talking about this earlier today where, uh, you know, because of the AD stuff and the basketball stuff, like they've kind of, that, that, that first week of spring football kind of got delayed as far as like our access is concerned. And so mm -hmm. like, in a way that eliminates like that week three of spring practice where like you're writing about like the backup walk on Nicole. fullback or something like that, where you're just like scraping the bottom of the barrel full stories. Like we haven't even like scratched the surface no. on the storylines of this the, team uh, and Wash we're already four practices in. So that's, Beautiful. that's a good thing for our sake. It the washhead has worked hard behind the scenes yeah. to earn respect <laughs> of teammates. That, that story, Ooh, yeah. you guys are getting pretty cynical now. <laughs> Well, you need to check. When you read enough of those stories, they all kind of blend together. You got to find a sense of wonder in those things. The competition within camp made this <laughs> team better. All right, Sean, you're horrible. <laughs> you wrote that story, probably. That's why. Of you... course, I have. <laughs> I say have. probably a minimum of twenty-eight times. <laughs> iron sharpens iron. You've <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> heard all right. that a few times. <laughs> I was hoping, you, it, it, and you're not going to fall on the landmine to overwrite about the three teams, the rattlesnake, not, and the, the bug eaters, the rattlesnake boys, and the old gold knights. I don't think I'm going to do the whole, this is the way they're practicing thing. I might have, to, you might have. Because to. it's just a portion of practice. Like yeah. it's a way to like make it fun to get all three fields going. Like they, they said it themselves today. Like they, they're still doing like their first team, like their their top groups working together. Right. Like this isn't just you're exclusively on the rattlesnake boys. Right. You don't practice at all with <laughs> their members of the guy. of the spring league. So like Fedoni's I mean, a rattlesnake boy, right? Yeah. So I, I think it's another innovative way to just create competition. competition. And like when you hit that grind of the back week of, of spring, like that competition, I think is going to be a good motivator to, to keep keep the the juices going a little bit. i envision fedoni with a rattlesnake yeah bringing a rattlesnake like, to the field yeah <laughs> come to the podium with a rattler <laughs> over his neck i, I mean, the snake i kind of I, I could see him doing something like that <laughs> it's official mascot it's not advisable start tight <laughs> all right bitten by a rattlesnake 